Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottenden from the Flourish Academy where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to change the color of clothing inside of Lightroom. But first, please check out our sponsor, YM Camera, for all of your photography needs. And if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your photographer friends because it really helps us to produce more content. My goal in the next two videos is to change the color of the green stripe in her sweater dress today inside of Lightroom and in an upcoming video inside of Photoshop so that we can compare the ease and efficiency. Although I guess it really does depend on your overall workflow and which application you like to spend more time in. I wanna press backslash on my keyboard just to show you a quick before and after. So I did a quick retouch of this image, by the way, we have two free retouching presets available for you at flourish.academy slash Lightroom. I also have a video there showing you how I use the adjustment preset to soften skin. Okay, in order to begin, let's press K in our keyboard to select our adjustment brush. Now, when the mask panel appears, you'll notice that I already have two masks on this image. One is to add light and the other is to soften her skin. We want to create a selection of the green stripe so that we can change its color. What you could do is click create new mask and then choose color range in order to select the range of color. But heads up, I experimented with this. It doesn't work in this image because there's green also in the background. So I'm just going to use my brush, but a couple of things. I wanna make sure that auto mask is turned on so that Lightroom constrains this to the edges, areas of contrast. I'm also going to press O on my keyboard to turn on the overlay so that I can see exactly where I'm brushing. Let's press Command or Control Plus in order to zoom in, make this brush a lot bigger with the right bracket key, and I'm just going to brush over this green area, wait for that mask to catch up. Now you'll notice it's doing some weird things with the edges, and that's because I have auto mask turned on. What I could do is turn auto mask off and just kind of select in the center just to make it a little bit faster. And then when I get close to the edges, I will turn auto mask on. So that might be a little bit faster. I think that's really personal preference. So let's turn auto mask on, make this brush a little bit smaller with the left bracket key, and then start to carefully brush along these edges, making sure we don't go too far. Now, there are always going to be instances where I go too far or I miss something. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly make this selection and then we will clean up any mistakes. Once you have that selected, if it helps you, you might wanna change your mask overlay mode to something like white on black so that you can really see Whoa, there are a lot of mistakes here. I see I've gone too far and there are some areas that are not even selected. So I'm going to turn auto mask off, make my brush a little bit bigger, and I'm going to brush over this area that's white that I wish to be selected where I, I see some of those areas I just missed. I can quickly do that because it's not near an edge and I can just make sure that I grab it. Okay, now that I've cleaned that up, it's time to remove these edges. Whether or not you use the overlay or what mode you use the mask overlay in is completely up to you. I, I think it's really easy to see this black on white or the ruby light, but in order to subtract these areas we don't wish to be selected, we could click the subtract button, but I'm actually going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Alt or Option on your keyboard in order to change your cursor to a minus. You can see, maybe you can see, <laughs> I have a very small brush. Did you know that if you hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and you press the right bracket key, you can make that brush bigger. If you press the left bracket key, you can make it smaller, but you have to do that whilst holding down Alt or Option on your keyboard. I'm gonna make this pretty small and brush over these edges to clean up where I made some mistakes. 
Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go to color overlay just so I can see everything again. Pretty good. Ooh, there's a few areas that could use some work right here. I still see the tiniest part of her sweater that's green, okay. Next, I'm going to press O in order to turn off the overlay. I think we should zoom out at this point to look at the entire image. There are two ways you can shift the color. You can come into the hue slider and simply slide it to map one color to a different color. That's what hue is. We're mapping one color to another color. So you could play around with this slider and just see if you find a color that you like. If you do find a color that you like, you can also adjust the saturation of that color. So you could really bring it up. However, I have found that typically when I am making an adjustment like this, I am almost never increasing the saturation. In fact, I'm usually decreasing it because it starts to not look natural. So again, you could play with the hue slider and just see what color you like. I am going to double click that back to zero and I'm actually going to take my saturation down to negative 100. Next, I'm going to click on the color box on the bottom right of the panel. And in this color picker, you can essentially choose any color you would like, which is really convenient. So let's say we wanted to make this a certain shade of blue. You can select blue or that looks maybe even a little bit aqua. You could adjust the saturation by moving the slider. So you can see that's changing the saturation of that color. Or you can simply click and drag the color picker yourself. If you pull down lower in this box, it will be less saturated and towards the top, it will be more saturated. I typically start by choosing a color at the top so that I can see, okay, this is a color I like. I wanna go with this color, but it's a little bit too saturated. So I'll pull it down. If you would like to reset this completely and start over, simply pull the saturation all the way down to 0% and just click away from it and you'll notice that it took that color away. I'm going to click this box again and just choose a color that I like. I think that this tool is really fun and it's a very powerful way to change the color of clothing in Lightroom, which by the way, we could not do in previous versions, but since Adobe updated the masking panel, it's really very powerful. Again, in the next video, we will explore this inside of Photoshop.